Hi, today we're going to take a brief look at how a latching RF relay works. Um, this RF relay basically is a pretty simple and standard one. And uh, uh, one side of it is an APC7 connector, and the other side is uh, the out one output is a uh, um, N connector output, and the other side is terminated to a 50 ohm uh, load. So many RF relays are uh, the coils are made so that uh, they are latching relays. By that, I, uh, what I mean is uh, when you apply voltage across the, uh, the relay uh, terminals here, um, one direction, then the relay switches to, let's say, uh, the 50 ohm side. And when you reverse the polarity of the, uh, the uh, power supply, then um, it switches to the other side. So let's take a look at uh, how it works uh, before we discuss the, uh, uh, the driving circuit. So now, if I put a power supply uh, for this particular one, it's uh, 24 volts. Uh, so nothing happens because it's already, real, uh, it's already set to this side. So let's switch the polarity and we can listen to uh, uh, the relay clicking. Oh, I probably didn't turn on the uh, power supply. Hang on. Yep, you heard it just clicked. So now let's reverse the polarity of this uh, um, power supply. And we'll, we'll hear it clicks again. So now what is going on is that, uh, um, well, we, even if after I remove the power supply, the relay still uh, latches in place, hence the name latching relay. So let's t uh, take a look inside to see how uh, this latching relay works. Um, so for this uh, particular kind, it has uh, uh, you know one side of it. Uh, in this compartment is the relay. On the other uh, side of the compartment is uh, where the uh, the RF circuitry uh, lies. So it doesn't really, um, you know, in, typically you don't want to uh, open up these kind of a precision um, RF. Uh, equipment and uh, but you know you can easily damage them so let's see so here is my uh, relay uh, the, the look inside and if you look carefully you will see that uh, um, there is a shaft that goes through this coil and on one side of the shaft uh, now is uh, connected to this uh, this uh, plate and if you use a screwdriver, uh, you can feel that uh, these uh, both sides are slightly magnetized. So what is going on is when you are applying, um, let's see, a voltage through the relay. Uh, in this case, it would be the other way around because we just... Uh, okay, so in, when you're applying, watch carefully. Watch this uh, uh, shaft carefully. You see, now it's switched to the one side. And uh, so actually, it's quite simple. It's basically a, uh, a magnetic coil, uh, a coil inside, and it depends on which direction the, uh, the magnetic field goes. Uh, it pushes the pin, the shaft goes to either one side or the other side. And because both sides are magnetized, and once the, the, the shaft uh, you know, reaches uh, one side, it stays there until the next time you put another uh, reverse polarity um, voltage across. Then uh, it gets switched to the other side. So how to drive this uh, is, uh, you know, there are many methods to drive this uh, circuit. One simplest way is just as we, what we had is we, uh, we typically, we just apply, you know, the voltage here and then reverse the polarity and it will switch to the other side. Now, in practice, there are many ways uh, we can do this. The simplest way, obviously, is um, uh, there. You know, some people would uh, uh, use a let's see, uh, two uh, transistors or two, like you know, two uh, power devices. Let's just call this um, with the emitters tied together and with a small. Um, these are resistors, R1, R2, uh, 
and then we tie it up to the VCC. Okay, so tie it up to the VCC. And uh, across the, uh, the collectors, we put our relay coil here. So this is our, our relay, RL. Now, when you want to switch it on one direction, you apply a pulse, let's say uh, here, uh, let, let's just say we put the base of this transistor high and the base of this transistor low. And what happened is when this transistor on the left begins to conduct, um, current would be flowing through R1 and through R2, RL. Now, if we um, make this uh, a resistor low enough, then um, we can actually provide sufficient voltage across the, uh, the, the RL. Now, the obvious problem of this approach is that uh, uh, when you are you know, you, when you have like two resistors here, these especially these are very low value. And in order to turn it on, you pretty much have to, uh, you have to use a lot of power, right? So, so basically a lot of current has to go through these to, um, to turn it on and off. Um, another approach uh, some people do is, uh, uh, you know, obviously we can do a, a full edge each bri bridge. Right, so a full edge, edge bridge, um, we can put the relay coil in the middle, and it depends on where, which direction the current goes, and we can turn on and off the, uh, the relay. Now that's pretty wasteful because uh, we, you know, because the, these relays are impulse powered. So ideally, we only need to send a uh, pulse briefly through before it begins to conduct and uh, switch the relay to the desired position. Um, so we don't necessarily need to, you know, keep the, 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 uh, the supply current on. So let's think about what we can do. So because it's a, a, it only requires uh, the conduction for a brief period of time, we can actually use this circuitry to, uh, to drive the relay. For, for instance, we can uh, place a, a capacitor between the relay coil and uh, the power supply. So when this uh, side is positive, uh, but, you know, we assume that the relay, is, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the capacitor is discharged. So when you initially apply the power supply, the power, um, this capacitor is going to start it to charge up. So basically, you're going to send a current pulse. So this is time, and this is uh, your uh, current. So you're going to send a current uh, through like this, right? Um, so what happened is, uh, you know, when we uh, reach, um, so basically the, the current drives through the, the coil, um, you know, like a, for a uh, period of time, gonna turn on this relay. Now, once the relay is on, and once this uh, capacitor is charged, uh, no current would be flowing through because, uh, you know, it's a capacitor. So to turn the relay the other way around, what we need to do is we can uh, install a switch here. Um, and uh, so we disconnect the positive power supply and we connect this uh, uh, switch. So what is going on is originally this uh, uh, capacitor was charged like positive, negative. And when we close this circuit, uh, the positive and negative would be reversed. So the current would be flowing uh, from here to here. and. Uh, Again, you're going to discharge the, uh, the, uh, the capacitor through the coil. And uh, that's what, is, you know, the energy stored in the capacitor would uh, uh, turn, uh, would switch your relay the other way around. So this is clearly a very efficient way to do that. And we actually don't need a full H bridge to uh, achieve this. The, uh, the the method that I dis just discussed, um, the simplest way we can do that is through a uh, push-pull uh, output stage of any uh, either a amplifier or a uh, dedicated uh, uh, driver. So basically, uh, you know, so I'm just going to ignore uh, the rest of the circuitry and uh, there probably is a diode here somewhere, but uh, um, let's uh, ignore that. So 
when we connect the output from the push pull output to our relay and that's your VCC um, what is going on is uh, oh sorry I missed the, uh, the capacitor so let's uh, put a capacitor here this is a plus minus um, so when you pull let's say when the output is high um, the current will flow through the capacitor charging it and what and then uh, the, the initial impulse would turn on the relay and uh, when you set the output to low uh, this is going to be exactly what we discussed earlier so basically the positive side of the, uh, the capacitor is going to be grounded and uh, uh, the relay coil is going to discharge through uh, the lower transistor and uh, going to turn it uh, off or the other way around so let's take a look at how we implement this um, so what I'm going to do is uh, use the, the simplest um, a, uh, a quad half bridge driver, uh, the SN 754410. So here is a simple uh, circuitry that I put up on breadboard. Uh, it basically uses a, uh, a SN 754410 uh, quad. A half bridge driver and I'm only using like uh, one of the four half bridges um, so here basically we have the ground connection here and uh, this pull-up resistor is for the uh, output enable and uh, typically you really uh, you don't really need this because you know the output uh, it's pulled up um, by by default and uh, so, so the, right now I have it, uh, this is connected to the 5 volts and the positive rail here is connected to 24 volts and the negative is connected to, uh, to, to ground. Um, so now uh, I wanted you to take a look at the, uh, the relay action here uh, while I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, connecting the, uh, the, the, the input. So basically when I the input is high, the input is uh, log oh, high, then it, uh, um, you know, the, the relay switches to the one direction, and if I uh, disconnect the, the input, which is uh, uh, low, then it uh, switches back. Now, the reason it's uh, automatically switching back is because the output is enabled always, right? So, uh, if I, you know, if I, for example, if I wanted to keep it, uh, um, Oops, keep it on, like, let's say, uh, one location. I simply need to um, either, you know, either I uh, basically uh, constantly input uh, a low, or I can, um, I can uh, change the pull up resistor to ground, so pull down the, the input, and now it stays there until uh, next time, you know, either I uh, disconnect this or I, uh, I uh, change the input switch. So technically speaking, that uh, uh, this pull-up resistor is not needed if you just need to uh, keep the output always enabled.